This is a long story, but good. And as true as 33 years of time, faded memory can allow. I like to think that I do remember it vividly. Some background first. When I was in second grade, my parents got divorced and my mom moved my two brothers, my sister, and me into a rental house. Looking back on it as an adult, it was a terrible place, but it was what my mom could afford. The floors were uneven. The house was sided and roofing shingles. The stairs shook as you walked up and the stove required an external propane tank. There was also a dirt floor cellar with an awesome little hiding place under the stairs. Definitely a hell house, the stereotypical house for haunting. For seven or eight year old me though, it was pretty awesome. It was also my first house that didn't have wheels. My newly single mom would go on dates every weekend and would leave me with my 15-year-old sister to babysit. Though, as soon as my mom would leave, my sister would bolt off to a party or boyfriend's house. My oldest brother was 20 and would only come home when the mood suited. And my other brother, he'd always go to a friend's house a few blocks away. I was eight years old alone in what I now know was a crappy house. Another important note is that there was the master bedroom, a bathroom, dining room, and kitchen on the ground floor. Upstairs there were three rooms, my sister's room, my room that I shared with my middle brother, and the other room with a padlock on the door. Now it's story time. I'd always heard funny noises in the house but my mom always told me that it was just an old house. And my siblings, they never really paid any attention. But one of these wonderful Friday or Saturday nights, I was alone in the house and watching TV. I heard footsteps coming down the stairs and a child's giggle. I looked over at the stairs and there was nothing there. I hear more footsteps nothing there. It's just an old house. More footsteps coming from the kitchen and down the stairs into the cellar. The noise stopped for a while and I settled down. Just watch TV. About 15 minutes later, I hear someone running up the stairs and into the doorway leading into the living room and then they just stop. Eight-year-old me is freaking out. So is 41-year-old me remembering it. But that was it at first. Fast forward a few weeks of horrified and ignored me spending Friday nights sitting by myself while no one in the family could possibly be bothered to stay home with me. Something would always happen. And I was always told that it was just an old house or I was imagining it. And then my imagination spoke to me. Hi, do you want to come play with me? I'm bored. I didn't see anyone there. And I just thought my sister left her radio on or something. Let's play. I look back toward the dining room and there's a little girl about seven or eight herself, standing there. She looked vaguely like one of the kids that lived behind us, but before I could ask why she was in my house, she giggled and ran off and went straight upstairs. I ran after her. I bolted up the stairs and I saw her at the top of the landing as she ran off again, past my sister's door, past my door, and around the top of the stairs and into the third door, slamming it behind her. Remember what I said about that third door? It was padlocked shut. I ran downstairs, I didn't stop to put on shoes, and I was out the front door and around the back of the house to the detached garage to hide until someone came home. I guess the mood suited him because my oldest brother came home. At first, he was pissed at my mom and my sister for leaving me at home by myself. 
But finally, he asked me what had happened. He didn't believe my story at first. Who would? Until he looked up at the window to the third room. The light was on. We stayed in the garage for a while until I was okay to go back inside. During which time my sister got home and she got one hell of an ass chewing. The three of us go inside and they leave me to sit in the living room while they investigate my story. I heard them messing with the padlock and then a loud crash. Some stuff moving around and then, oh, holy shit! Click of a light switch, slamming door, running footsteps down the stairs. And then I see my brother and sister sprinting towards me as they pick me up and we all load up into my brother's car and drove to my grandparents' house, two towns away. We told them the story, and then I heard what they found in the room. It was a lot of furniture and stuff, but my brother said that he found a picture. It looked like a little girl, the one that I'd told him about. And my sister found a rug that was stained. It was either red wine or blood. She didn't wait around to find out. They just grabbed me and booked it. I never had to step foot in that house again. But fast forward many years, about 20 years. I had just gotten out of the Marine Corps and I was working as a corrections officer in my home state and was helping with inmate files. I noticed a familiar address. It was that house. Here's the rest of the story as I know it. After we moved out, my brother had called the police because of the other stuff that they'd found in that room, and apparently there was an investigation. The red stuff that my sister had found on the rug was a bloodstain. As this was the 80s and a very small town, DNA wasn't yet a forensic tool, so they couldn't tell whose blood it was, only that it was human. The neighbors said that the father of the family that owned the house was always drunk, they suspected abuse of the mother and the daughter. Then one day, they suddenly just left for Arizona and rented out the house to subsidize income, locking up all their furniture in that one room. The parents were arrested on an unrelated charge. After that, the house was condemned and they had to get their stuff out. But they never did find the little girl until, in preparation for the demolition... They were digging in the cellar, in my little hiding spot, under the stairs. <laughs>